Welcome to another video in the Metric Math Water Wastewater YouTube series. This video will explain how to find the new concentration when multiple solutions of different concentrations are all mixed together. One of the big challenges that we face when working with solutions is our fundamental idea of what a solution actually is. Now some background information that you need to know before we get into this video. First of all, what is a solute and what's a solvent? basic definition of a solute is the stuff that disappears when you mix two things together. For example, when you put sugar in water, the sugar disappears in the water and the sugar is the solute and the water is the solvent. When you put oil together with gasoline, the oil disappears and that's the solute and the gasoline is the solvent. So there's a variety of different ways you can measure solutes and solvents. But again, you always deal with concentration. How much of one, usually a mass, divided by how much of the other, usually a volume. Now, when you put two solutions together of different concentrations, you have to remember that one will dilute the other. You're going to have more volume, but you're also going to have a different amount of solute that's in there. Now the total new solute is the solute amount from each of the multiple solutions are going to be added together and the new volume is going to be the multiple volumes of each individual solution added together because each one will dilute all the other ones. And the new concentration is what you get when you take the new mass divided by the new volume. Will this work with various concentration units? You bet it will. It could be grams, it could be liters, it could be moles, it could be a wide variety of things. So for this particular question, we're not really that concerned about the mass units that we're going to be working with. Now here's the question. The following solutions are all mixed together into one container. 150 liters of a 25% solution, 110 liters of a 31% solution, 225 liters of a 17% solution, and 340 liters of an 8% solution. Find the new final concentration of this solution. Now just some common sense stuff before we get into the actual solution. We know that the highest concentration solution is 31%, and we know that the lowest one is 8%. So logic says that the new solution concentration, when you mix them all together, is somewhere going to be between 31 and 8%. Now because you have different volumes for each one, 150 liters, 110 liters, 225 liters, 340 liters, it's kind of hard to just logically make an estimate as to where your final answer is going to be. But we know it's going to be between 31% on the high side and 8% on the low side. Now let's find the new final concentrations. The first step that we look at now is the keywords. Mix together into one container. So you have all four of these are going to be put together. So that's our first keyword. You're going to have to come up with a new final volume and a new final mass. Now that we have our target as to what we're going to do, now we can take a look at each individual solution. So 25% of this 150 liters solution is solute. Now if you want to use this in grams or kilograms, it really doesn't matter as long as you understand that a quarter of this 150 liters is the solute. And we take a look at the next one, and notice it's 110 liters, and it's a 31% solution. And the third one is 225 liters of a 17% solution. So notice you have a little bit more volume, but the concentration is dropped down. And then the last one is 340 liters. So there's, that's the biggest volume of all of them so far, but it's a relatively weak concentration. So somewhere in that mix of numbers is going to be your final solution. Step two, how much solute is in each solution? Now, an easiest way to do it, and there's probably a variety of ways to do it, but the easiest way is just to take a percentage. Now, 25% is the same thing as 25 divided by 100, or 0 0.25. So 150 liters times 0 0.25 equals about 37.5 grams. The next one is 110 liters of 31%, or 0.31 and that works out to 34.1 grams. Now I could have used kilograms, I could have used grams, I could have used liters, it doesn't matter because at the end we're still going to get back to percentage. So you don't have to worry in this particular question about what the mass unit is going to be. 
Third one is 225 liters of 0.17. And when you multiply those two together, it works out to about 38.25. And the last one is 0 0.08, which is 8%. So 340 liters times 0 0.08 is 27.2. Now you add those all together and you get a new total of approximately 137.05 units. Now it could be grams, it could be kilograms, we're not really all that concerned about it. Step number three, what's the new volume? So we found that the total mass of the solute has been increased by each one of the individual solutions. Now we have to find what the new volume is when you add those all together. So 150 liters plus 110 liters plus 225 liters plus 340 liters, that's going to be your new total volume. And that adds up to a new total of about 825 liters. Step four, now we have to find what our new concentration is. And the formula for a new concentration is the amount of solute divided by the total volume of the new solution, or all the solution volumes added together. Now when we take a look at our next step, we find that the new concentration is equal to the answer that we found previously, 137.05 grams, divided by the next answer that we found, 825 liters, and that new concentration is going to be approximately 16.61%. Now we predicted earlier on that it was going to be somewhere between 31% on the high side and on the low side 8%. If you add 31 plus 8 is 39, you take half of that, that's about 19 and a half. And you'll notice that our answer is a little bit less than half. And that does make sense because, look, we had 340 liters of a really weak solution. So that brought our overall final answer down below the, about the halfway point. Thanks for watching this math video. Please check out the other videos in this channel. Put in some comments and pass this site on to other water and wastewater students. Goodbye for now and have a good day.